We're going on a, to a spot here that, uh, how many years ago? 20 years ago, at least, yeah. I drove out a beautiful buck to Andrew. <laughs> so we're going back to do this spot and um, we're gonna call it redemption or failure. <laughs> But we have hunted, we've hunted for, today's Saturday, the season's been open for a week. A week now, and we have not shot a deer, we have not seen a deer on the Cape. Or you haven't been hunting every day, but we've hunted pretty hard. And just after work and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And today <laughs> it is actually raining. Uh, we're both miserable about it, but we're gonna go hunt this spot that Andrew missed the deer, how many years ago? We said 20 years ago. And you missed one last year. And I missed a doe here with Ethan. Uh, Why do we have to um, uh, put like a different category? What's that? That it was a doe. Well, because it doesn't count if you miss a doe. It only counts if you miss a buck. Uh, so, so we're going to keep you guys on camera as much as we can. And uh, hopefully, ugh, something will happen. found the deer would be on there and like I said I pushed the huge buck off that uh, like 20 years ago to, to Andy we have pushed a few do does over the years but we come up here usually during black powder but because everything's been so lousy on our irregular spots we're not seeing anything I feel good about this I don't know, we'll figure it out in a minute. 
can see where they've made these trails through here. And you just gotta creep along. And then if you hear that, that breaking of the reeds, then you know they're in front of us. All right, I guess you got a lot of me on the screen there. All right, I'm gonna put you guys up to a little look around. Then we'll just keep cruising along. Like I said, Andy's upwind of this. He's got a, in a tree, he's got a good view of it. So if I push anything out, we'll get him. Um, hopefully I don't give away too much of the location. Not that it matters. I don't think anybody else but us hunts this because it, it's so thick. But I've literally... I've literally been in here and heard one crunching in the reeds and he's been like 10 feet away from me. And at that time I didn't have a doe permit. I could see the body like 10 feet away in the reeds but I couldn't shoot him. But today I have a doe permit. So if something brown is 10 feet away and it's definitely identifiable as a deer, um, I'm gonna shoot him. But like I said, one year it turned black powder in here. There was one 10 feet away in the reeds. I could see its butt, its legs, its shoulders. I just couldn't see its head and I didn't have a doe permit. Um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna put you up so you can get an idea how big this mess is. seasick but all right
list of secret spots. I think that's a freaking boot print. I can't believe that anyone else has found this little hole. I mean, they could find it, but most guys don't want to come in here. But as you can see, it's like, there's a bed there. They're just all beds out on this little ridge in the marsh. But the crazy thing about the house here, I've never seen any other human sign. So I don't know, it's not good. I still got a little more of it to push, but I wanted to film that thing there. I think that's a boot print and that just, um, that literally has ruined my day. This is like our secret spot. You can see the deer really come in here and uh, bed, it, bed down when there's really heavy pressure. We usually find them here in, like I said, in uh, black powder season, but apparently our secret is no longer safe. It's devastating. But who knows, there still could be one I'm pushing ahead of me. And they tend to, the funny part about these reeds is they um, they hold, like they don't break till you're like 10 yards, 15 yards next to them. So Andy still has a chance. Maybe that's just a weird, I don't know, that geometric pattern, I'm, I look like a boot. And that just means, I mean, it didn't look like a human had stomped their way in here. But, uh, I don't know. Put in the comments, you think that's a boot print? I really, I'm sweating like a hound from going through all this. And now I'm uh, very disheartened. All right, I'm gonna put you away. Push the rest of this push. Maybe cry a little. This does not look good. I have pushed out of the reeds. And you see there's this little river. And then I think you can see over there. Can you see him? There's Andy just sitting. He's gonna stay there. I'm gonna circle back. Andy! The only other place you could do is go back and stand on the trail. Stay there for like, Andy! Stay there for like 10 minutes while I go push this in case one's out here. Also, the, the grass, because it's so early in the season, the grass is high. All you're going to see is the top of their heads. See that communication without him even moving. All right, so <coughs> I am sweating from going through this apocalypse now grass. But I'm going to start, I came in, I found a deer trail. I'm going to push back, back through all that crap. I mean, I didn't have the camera on the entire time. But, um, I, uh, whoa! But it was probably 20 minutes to get through all this thick stuff. But you can see this deer trail. Oh, let me get, hold on a second. Oh, some of them are. Oh. Oh, see this trail? The air trail is pretty good. There weren't any tracks on it. But maybe it'll take me to another highway in here. <coughs> Let's see how thick it is. So they can, yeah, they can leave the uplands and come into these pathways. See that one there? That goes back to the island. This one hopefully will take me out. I'll just keep pushing. So I don't know, that was a boot print on that island. Is this difficult for you guys? If that was a boot print on the island, the jig is up and our secret ace up our sleeve spot that we, at, use, at least usually we bounce one and you hear them smashing through the reeds. And then every like four or five times they they break cover where Andy is and we get a shot. That's the best spot. Um, I don't even know how much of this video we're going to post because it does give away some of our secrets. But considering in the best secret of all, we found, um, we found, I think, a boot print. I mean, that's like, <coughs> finding a boot print there is like, coming home and finding another man's sneakers under your bed. 
I mean, oh man, that spot, maybe, I don't know, somebody else could be on it. We found it probably 20 years ago and uh, it's always like when the pressure's on, they go out to that spot there. They move out of the uplands. They bed there during the day. And uh, I don't know, it's always been good. Now it sucks. Whoa, oh. The only, the biggest problem here is, let me show you on the ground here. There are these muskrat holes. And any of these muskrat holes, it'll be hard. You hit one of those, you can literally sink up to your waist. So there's a little clearing here. I'm gonna try and find my way back to some hard ground. Meet up with Andy. We'll push another spot. But uh, it's always been good for us. Um, this year, I don't know, maybe that was just, I like to just think that wasn't, but you saw the, the, the video. That looked like a boot print. Um, it's also started to rain. I don't know, it's time for us to get a lease in Pennsylvania or New York or something. Cape Cod deer hunting is, it is tough. That's part of the fun, because, you know, you're accomplishing something most people can. Look at this, there's another deer runway. Let's see if it's been traveled recently. Who knows? I don't want to fall in that, that's for sure. And then the crazy thing is, when you push around in these reeds, crap, I'm kind of lost, I think. When you push around in these reeds, you come to these cricks, but all of a sudden, if you've kicked one out, they don't like to run in this, they just creep. You'll see them standing in one of these openings, or you'll see them like six or eight feet back in the brush. You only see them like when the reeds blow. All right, I gotta put you guys away and try and get the heck out of here. This sucks. I wanted to show you guys this. Because oh, this video, if nothing else, is it's just wet and mucky and disgusting. But see this right here? Switch the camera. See that little track there? I mean, that is well worn. And then look, it goes right into the Phragmites here. And this is how I'm gonna get back to uh, where Andy is. You, know, you can see it's just dents everywhere, dents everywhere. And then this basically deer highway. And there's like tracks where they come along. Okay, they've actually worn a path. But um, it's not muddy, but you gotta remember, I know it's windy. Every single day, the tide comes in here and floods. So it's tough to tell if footprints are fresh or not. Check and see if this is either yeah, it's doable. Oh, it's muddy, but yeah, so on either side of me, the ground is pretty firm. But from the deer traveling this year after year, it's like swamp swampy. So hopefully, oh, I think I see water on the screen. Hold on. Hopefully, this will take me to some spot where the deer are bedding. Like I said, once in a while when I've been doing this. I hear myself slopping around. Then I hear crunch, crunch, crunch coming the other way, which would be awesome. But I'm sneaking back around. Andy's repositioning. And we're uh, hoping. It's always nice to see the mud turned up there. The mud hasn't been turned up here, so. No one's been down here since the tide was high this morning at six something or other. All right, I don't know what we're gonna do with this footage, but I'm making, doing it anyway. I'm gonna put you guys back again. Ooh. No, I was gonna say that looked like a boot, but it's not. You know how when you're, you're hunting sometimes, here's a little, you'll run across people and they have like a, a little tiny yappy dog, you know, like a, a tiny little one foot dog, and they have an orange vest on them and stuff, and you're just like, dude, come on, I'm not gonna shoot your dog. Now, I'm not going to shoot a person's dog. I won't, <laughs> on you <know>. purpose. <laughs> on purpose, yeah. But we just ran into a guy who had a Great Dane, a, a brown Great Dane, and he had a, or, a horse blanket on it, you know, a, a orange cover on it. And I'm not going to say, and any hunter who shoots a dog, no matter what, is a moron. But at least that guy I could see, like, yeah, I have a dog the size of a deer, 
I'm going to put an orange vest on it. But the rest of these idiots out here who have a poodle with an orange vest on, like, I'm going to be like, oh, wow, it's one of those pygmy deer. But, you know, like I said, any hunter that shoots a dog or uh, livestock or something is a moron and deserves to be have all their hunting stuff taken from them, etc. But I can understand the fear of a guy who has a deer sized dog that is brown. Um, I mean, it literally, we were like, is this guy walking a deer? But they had a orange thing on. Anyway, nothing yet. Uh, we've seen nothing. Uh, we, I was through that whole swamp. There's a sign. There might have been a footprint. We'll show you that in the video, or you might have already seen it, which, like I said, I almost started to cry because this is our ace in the hole. And I found the smell. Oh, and Andy figured, <laughs> figured out the smell of. They smell like a horse or something all the time. I bought a thing of um, dopey and the cap was not screwed on tight and it's been leaking in my pocket. So, so I, all the time Andy's like, I smell one, I smell one. It turns <laughs> out it's the fact that he had a pocket full of deer urine. But now I'm very attractive to the to the. Yeah, you, might get, you might get jumped. <laughs> so we're gonna keep hunting. Hopefully we'll see something. Uh, I don't know how chaotic the, um, that footage in the Phragmites, that's what we call, those reeds are called Phragmites. Um, there definitely is, there's a bunch of deer in the area, but like I said, uh, Annie and I are having the worst season. Uh, we can't seem to do anything. So um, I hate watching videos when people put up a video when nothing happens. Um, but that's what this is. This is gonna be a, we put in the effort, but it, it, we still got another, hour and a half before the heavy rain comes, I think. <coughs> so we hunted all day. <coughs> we hunted hard in the rain. We're wet, we're cold. We have not seen anything. Andrew, you wanna go up on that? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. We had, and we were in that thick swamp. Nothing ever came by. We pushed the reeds. Uh, Nothing. Nothing. We're getting closer though. We're getting, yeah, we are. Part of us is like, should we even make this into a video? Part of us is like, what I could do, it'll be great. Alex wants the footage, so we're doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, this sucks. We got one more thing. We're gonna drive around tonight with spotlights. Trying to hit one. Trying to hit one with the car. Oh, there's a rain. We still got plenty of time. Uh, we'll keep you posted. And we're headed back to the truck, where we're going to try. Uh, Yesterday at Job Lot, I bought two tins of bumblebee tuna, peppercorn, and uh, what was it? Peppercorn and uh, lemon bumblebee lemon tuna, and it comes with four crackers. As promised, we're gonna do uh, a review. We can put that right in the thing. Failed hunt and bumblebee. There, can you see it? Bumblebee tuna. Uh, lemon pepper seasoned tuna and it comes with six crackers and a little tiny knife if bumblebee would like to sponsor us and if we like it we're gonna reach out to bumblebee and see if they'd sponsor us in the meantime even if we don't like it even, yeah we'll lie they could sponsor us. we're gonna do it the thing that's odd about this is that we're only uh, a few feet from a, a Burger King which I have a feeling is gonna end up being part of this eventually okay oh, we're going down this road Post. Oh. All right, let's see what we say about this. It comes in a convenient plastic package. It has this little knife. Oh. I think that this food review is great because it's we're under power. Yeah. It has this little spreader and a little thing of crackers. First, let's open up the crackers. I wonder if they're Ritz or they're Bumblebee brand. I don't know. This was a uh, in a compilation. Oh, it's a compilation. Cracker. It smells good. It smells a little, it doesn't, it smells like a generic Ritz. All right, why don't you stop for a second? Uh, here we go, we're gonna pop the seal. Yeah, why don't you drain that water out? What'd you see? You see what this is? Um, no, it does not smell good. Does it smell like fish? Oh, there we go, it's open. Ooh, it smells like tuna fish. Let's look at it on the camera here. Yeah. Is that a yeah. dead deer? It's a deer hide. Oh, I found someone else's deer oh, in the rib cage. In the rib cage of a deer. A deer kill. All right, let's go back to our review. There's the uh, tuna. It does not look appetizing. 
Hold on, hold still while we try this. Get a cracker in. Did this Didn't come with a packet of mayonnaise? Nope. Right, there it is. I got the there, put it on this cracker. It smells tuna. It smells like cat food. Mmm, he said. Worth the wait. It is Dear Bumblebee. I hope this is recording. For posterity. This whole, the little, the little knife. This little spoon is just a flicker of tuna inside <laughs> my car. I can see you already, you're like, fling. The thing is six crackers. Okay. I'm gonna put that on there. Hold on, got a little tuna in my lap. Andrew. Hold on, let me touch the screen so we can see. Where are you? Where, where are you? Hold on. Ooh, smells very tuny. All right. Mm. How come it just keeps moving you? Look at the camera. I don't know if I like lemon with my tuna. Mm. But it is what it is. Tuna. tuna. All right, so there's our review. After eight hours without eating, no, I mean, without eating. If Bumblebee wants to sponsor me, for, you know, an exorbitant amount of money, then, mmm, that's delicious. I'm not saying... I'll never eat anything again other than this tuna. It's not bad. I'm telling you, as a backpack food for hunting, if you get... I'm actually going to go back to Job Lot and get a couple more cans. It's not not good. I mean, it's not... Is it as good as Kippert's... You know, the other thing about this is it's very difficult to get out of the can. And that little knife is horse crap. Bend the um, lid. Make yourself a, a, a fork. The lemon, I'm not sure about the lemon. Yeah, I'm not a um, fan of lemon on my tree. All right, so that was it. Failed hunting. Well, we didn't get a hot thing, but and we just did this amazing review of this bumblebee tuna kit. Um, it was a dollar fifty a job lot. Was it worth the dollar fifty? It was a dollar fifty good. It was it was definitely a dollar fifty good, and it has a uh, x amount of calories. I don't know what it said. Mm -hmm. One hundred and ten calories in the tuna, and um, I think sixty calories in the crackers. So yeah, if you threw one of these in your pack for the day, it would be it would be better. About two hours ago, I was hungry. Now I'm just starving. But all right, that's the review. Bumblebee tuna, lemon pepper. <laughs> I don't know. People are always doing reviews. I thought it'd be fun. It's delicious. Until the next time. So we got the hunting video in this review. Let's tell us what you think in the comments. Have a good day.